less than 4% of the uh, votes were complementary tasks. That means that only less than 4% of the tasks that these uh, chimpanzees made were the manual complementary, both hands playing different roles. Okay? When we compare the results from the unimanual spontaneous tax, the first column, simple reaching tax, the second column, and cheap tax, the third column, bearing in mind that these are more or less the same chimpanzees in all the experiments, observations, we saw that in unimanual spontaneous tax, only three of ten individuals statistically, uh, were statistically significant uh, lateralized. And, uh, Curiously, the three for the left. Okay. None of the activities show a significant differences. Mm -hmm. And the results, the conclusion is that these tasks uh, do not lead to hand dominance. Okay. The same and four more chimpanzees for simple, simple reaching show that 12 individuals were lateralized more than the first uh, example. Nine of them were right-handed, and three of them were uh, left-handed. Finally, with, with the tip task, or host task, some others uh, say that, all individuals, the 14 individuals, were lateralized, 10 of them right-handed, 4 of them left-handed. There was not um, population-handedness uh, statistically significant, but comparing simple reaching and host task, chimpanzees were uh, right-handed or in the significance borderline, statistically speaking. Okay? And also there was another thing very, very interesting, uh, yeah, and it was that more than about the 80% of the individuals in the host task use their fingers to extract the food, while about the 20% of the individuals use objects to extract, extract the food. That means technological behavior. Uh, so sorry because uh, a moment. Okay, I didn't explain uh, for uh, people out of the primatological studies uh, this task. Well, when you manage a spontaneous task, that's whatever the task that the chimpanzee uh, do. Unimanual precision grip is just one um, hand taking, picking an object, small object, and the manual complex. This host task was putting uh, feeding uh, wisely and nodes, etc., in the middle of a piece of host, okay, uh, in the way that they cannot arrive to the food with the tongue. So they have to use the fingers or whatever, okay? So this third experiment is in the third column, and this was the experiment who was significant, because as the same chimpanzees were not lateralized in unimanual spontaneous tasks, they were a little more lateralized in simple reaching and completely lateralized at the complex, the, the real complex task, the manual complementary task. And not only completely lateralized, even in the same way as humans, meaning that most of them were right-handed and some few were left-handed, but also using, uh, starting to use, emerging a new behavior, an extrasomatic behavior, the technological behavior, because they took an object from outside the body and try to um, arrive to the food, okay? So, uh, these observations uh, for us pointed to two main conclusions. The more complex the tax, the more hand laterality is expressed in humans and apes. Humans, because Womini did this, uh, Natalie made this, uh, I always did one, one. <laughs> and Natalie uh, did this uh, experiment but also in apes. And our, uh, also, the more complex the task, the less common is it is in spontaneous behaviors. 
the other observation is technological behavior in modern apes expresses when they perform bimanual complementary tasks, which are the tasks more difficult to observe in nature. Okay? Okay, we go to uh, human evolution. Um, we know a lot of uh, different methods for inferring hand laterality in human evolution. For example, dental were, dental were analysis, suborchaeological methods, etc. Also, stone tool uh, analysis. And through these and other methods, uh, we know that uh, hominins were lateralized, hand uh, lateralized, uh, for at least the pre-Neanderthal European family, that means around 500,000 years ago, at least, at least all this family, okay? But um, how got attached, get installed uh, hand laterality in human evolution? We know when, but how, okay? So our results at the uh, Fundación Mona anti Infunci, by the way, uh, anti they gave more or less the same uh, results as uh, Fundación uh, Mona, uh, show us that there is a connection between hand laterality, task complexity, and technology. We think that uh, this, same con uh, this same connection may have applied for human evolution. So how we can trace back uh, this connection? Because of uh, uh, trying to take and results from two different groups of data. The first is present-day primates, both humans and not humans, and archaeological and, and, archaeological and uh, paleoenvironmental evidence about extant hominins. The hypothesis is, the, is this one that you see in the slide, that there is a gradient of manual motor complexity that influences the expression of hand laterality. This, this gradient would order the tasks as follows. Uh, at the beginning, not at the beginning, at the bottom, we have less complex uh, tasks, less hand laterality, and less technological behavior. And through uh, an arrow or something like that, passing by unimanual tasks, unimanual precision grip tasks, and the manual complementary uh, tasks, we arrive to the more, the most complexity. Uh, complex task, hand laterality, and technological behavior. What about uh, human evolution? Um, what about astro australopithecines, for example? We know that all australopithecines have uh, more or less the same or even bigger uh, present-day chimpanzees, about 350, 400, 500 uh, square um, cubic centimeters in a position of about 30, uh, 300 or 400, okay, but more or less the same. So this means that Australopithecines uh, likely have at least the same capacities as modern apes. On the other, um, this may point that these Australopithecines may have the same uh, technological behavior as, le as at least this basic technological behavior that we uh, see in chimpanzees, for example, telnet fishing or with the sticks or another things that we saw in chimpanzees. Okay? But unlike chimpanzees, uh, early hominins uh, inhabited an increasingly, very incre uh, increasingly more airy environment. The close woods that dominated uh, Africa until about 3 million years, 3.5 million years ago, were gradually replaced by open uh, forests, savanna, steppes, etc. about 2.5 million years ago. What happened with this, that these new landscapes were in, uh, increasingly unpredictable both in time and space. That means that when you have a closed forest, you have the fruits the fruits or the leaves or whatever you want to eat in the same place all the time the, uh, along the year. But when you have uh, this open uh, forest and savannas, etc., you have different sources, different food in different places, in different times, seasons of the year. 
So this means more unpredictability and uh, more complex life, in fact. So this resource dispersion for us forced hominids to adopt a generalist diet in order to maximize the energy intake. This uh, hypothesis was published by Anton in 2002 from Morgaster from uh, at least 1.8 million years ago. Even earlier, uh, this unpredictable resource in time and space may have forced hominins to search for whatever the source, whatever the uh, source to be intake, to, to, to be fed, to be fed uh, and to take energy. But what uh, implies, what involves generalist diet? Involves a diversification of feeding activities because you don't uh, uh, eat just fruits or leaves. Mm -hmm. Generalist diet means that you take whatever is in the environment. Okay? So this diversification of feeding activities um, involves complex tasks may have become, become more and more uh, useful. Why? Because, for example, if you manage meat, wood, leaves, and fruits, uh, tubercles, etc., probably you need a different action that all primates didn't need until that point. Cutting actions. Cutting actions are always, always the manual complementary task. This uh, hypothesis of the emergence of cutting actions was exposed, was published by uh, Schick and Toth in 2004. What happened here? In the wild, nobody cuts. Nobody needs to cut. Okay? It's a new action. And cut only means that one hand do something and the other hand do another thing. The manual complementary task. Okay? Even the host task, you take the host with a, one of your hands and you search for some stick to introduce into. Okay? You do another motion with the other hand. All these are complex the manual complementary tasks. The most complex, the most infrequent in modern apes, and the most necessary in human evolution for these early hominins who had to face generally a generalist diet. Okay? <clears throat> in my view, uh, this uh, goes in the human evolution to a starting feedback uh, wheel where complex has, uh, tasks, sorry, uh, force hand laterality, which force the brain laterality, which force to have more complex tasks, which force or facilitate to express more hand laterality, etc. Until, sorry, uh, uh, putting an uh, increasing or capa uh, brain capabilities, okay, which may be traced in the archaeological record by uh, the products of our ancestors. For example, we all we know about the uh, technological capability of uh, the Somas or Lafetetecus, maybe a Farensis, Gary, we don't know because uh, sometimes it's problematic, you know, Natalie, and, uh, about the correlations in the archaeological record, but anyway. Uh, it is said that uh, both in the Kika we, have, we don't have the tools, but we have the cut marks, and we are talking about 3.3 million years ago, and also Lomekwi, the, the, the earliest uh, um, stone tool assemblage uh, found that uh, Natalie has shown earlier and Antonella has shown uh, earlier, with 3.3 uh, million years also. Okay. So, these hominins develop a technological production while some others, probably some others contemporaries, maintain this, the same basic technological behaviors because they were. Um, going back to the forest, close forest, keeping in the forest, but in fact, going back. Uh, in this, this 
this uh, forest we were more and more closed, okay? So, these hominins that uh, develop the, technolog the technological production uh, facilitate, one, hand laterality, because technological production, of course, is a manual complementary task. You have to manage the core, you have to manage the hammerstone, and you have to turn, split, uh, etc., and uh, do the percussion. Okay, so this technical, uh, technical production uh, was facilitated, but also facilitated, is a feedback, and laterality, increasing precision and efficiency, and also the incorporation of a new material, which is the stone. Mm. This means a broader divergence between early hominins and their contemporaries, primates, that um, stay in the same uh, behavioral uh, component. Okay. Uh, the systematic technological production of Homo habilis or the offenses about two million years is the real generalization of this uh, behavior. At the end of this, uh, are the manual complementary tasks, as most of the technological process, even even uh, most or most of uh, or uh, all of them. <coughs> So, along the course of this technological development, Hanaterati would have become permanent. Teixeira and uh, Okazaki published this way to be permanent for Hanaterati in 2007. The hypothesis goes to this point, this feedback, where climate change, increasing unpredictable resources, uh, resources supply, may force it brain increase uh, and reorganization, going, forcing at the end from the stacks, forcing hand laterality, forcing technological development, forcing generalist uh, diet, intake of energy, forcing again, because of needs, the brain increase, etc. Okay? And this uh, feedback uh, arrived to a final consequence of this technological development, brain development, etc., which is the maximization of energy intake from any resource for from any place of the planet. It means that with, with a technological behavior, a quite uh, brain organization and um, hand laterality, etc., you have all the components to better adapt to whatever the environment. So this is the possibility of occupation of new and uh, diversified hands, uh, landscapes. Okay, some weeks ago, uh, there, were, there was a paper, a publication of a paper of our colleagues, Miguel Llorente as well, where they did an appraisal of the same chimpanzees, more or less the same, of course, chimpanzees that we studied in the past, yeah, where authors investigated both short-term and long-term uh, consistency of hand preference in this same group of naturalistic uh, um, chimpanzees in Fundación Mona with another uh, individuals. We have now um, 19 individuals of adult chimpanzees, okay? In, uh, many of which were participating uh, 11 years uh, ago. They did two experimental tasks, simple reaching and two tasks again, okay? And the experimental were conducted in 2007 and 2008 from the first experiments and 2018 from the last experiments. It's very interesting, it's very interesting that uh, the, the, these results. First, simple reaching, about simple reaching, the hand preference direction is not, non, not consistent after the longest period, 11 years. They are the same chimpanzees. This means that simple reaching does not entail any dominance, hand dominance in chimpanzees, of course, okay? But the second, it was very interesting, the tube task or the host task. The results were that hand preference, that the hand preference direction, right versus left, remained stable after both short time, one year, and a long time, 11 years, okay? So, those chimpanzees that did the host task 
11 years ago, and they were all right or left-handed, they still are the same or right or left-handed for the whole stats. Okay? And also in short time. The other result is that the comparison between tasks uh, confirmed that the chimpanzees were strongly lateralized for the steel test. And this uh, is very interesting that this, the, the strength of the hand preference in the tube text show an increasing trend in the long term. This means that 11 years ago, those uh, chimpanzees that were right-handed now are more right-handed doing the same task than 11 years ago. This means that the Sheira and Osaki was right. This can be installed in ontogeny, even in ontogeny, not just phylogeny. Okay? And at some point, I'm sure, and I'm more sure even uh, after the, the two, uh, the three lectures of this morning, uh, that this feedback had to turn into an spiral, as we see, where language may have emerged for coordinating intention, planning tasks, etc. We cannot uh, now to know when and how in this process, but surely it is necessary to go to an spiral like that. And this is everything. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada.